Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. So uh, it seems that I've actually got um, not really a clear night um, ahead of me tonight, but actually I've got a break in the cloud. So uh, with an opportunity like this, where there's just a few uh, minutes or uh, maybe about an hour of clear sky, um, what I can do is get out the, uh, the sea star, which I've got here with me. Um, just get this out, shove it on the tripod and uh, do a bit of imaging of the moon. So uh, if you want to uh, see me get this set up, show how simple it is to use and uh, show you some images of uh, the moon tonight, then uh, keep watching. So uh, here we are, got the sea star in the uh, in the box. So uh, let's just get it out. Maybe I'll even put a, uh, a countdown on so you can see how quickly it is to actually set this up. Um, so just literally screw the carbon fibre tripod into the bottom of the telescope. Let's put the box away. So the moon's uh, pretty much directly behind me. So all I need to do is just put this down onto a, um, a roughly level surface. Do is but that way it might speed things up in terms of slowing to the moon. Push the power button on the side till we hear the beep. And now we need to just go over to the app. I'll put the app down there as well so you can see it, but I'll share it on the screen too. So I'm using this on the iPad, and uh, one of my comments or previous improvements was to... Um, make a full screen version of the app in the iPad and they've, uh, they've actually done it. So uh, really impressed with this. So every time there's like an enhancement that you can make to this system, uh, ZWO seem to uh, be on it right away. And uh, yeah, they make the improvements and uh, release them. So it's really good to see that they've done that so quickly. So we've got the, uh, the moon up in front of the telescope. Oh, actually, there's uh, just a, a firmware update that needs to be done, so uh, let's just kick that off now. It shouldn't take too long. So whilst it's doing that, um, I can show you. So there's uh, the telescope there, just sat on the decking in the garden, and, and you've got the moon up there. It's reasonably clear. There's a few clouds kicking around. Um, but yeah, I think it should be all right. For Just doing a bit of moon astrophotography. Powering on, ready to connect. There you go, so that's that done. Boom, we're all updated and reconnected to the telescope. So the way that this works is um, you don't need to do a um, polar alignment with this telescope. It's got a compass built into it, so it knows which way um, magnetic, magnetic north is at least, and so therefore it knows where, uh, where it needs to point at the end of the day. What it'll end up do is make an approximation of where it needs to point first, then plate solve, and then recalibrate itself. So uh, it does all of that without you needing to, uh, needing to do anything. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, go over to Luna, tap on Go to Moon, and uh, just let it do its thing. This might struggle a bit actually because I've got a tree in the direction that it's trying to put the scope the first time. I might have to uh, give it a bit of a nudge in the right direction. Depends whether it's pointing through the trees or not. Kind of look at where it's pointing. You just about see a big oak tree there. Let's see how it gets on. Okay, so uh, best laid plans uh, failed to. Uh, find the moon um, 
I wouldn't really say this is down to the device, I'd say it's actually down to the fact that I've got many trees in this garden and so therefore it's going to struggle to play itself a bit. So what I'm going to do is manually slew it over to the rough direction of the uh, of the moon and then try and get it to play itself from there. I'll just get behind it, I can see where it's pointing. Nice thing with um, this app as well is you've got um, when you tap the controllers to slew it, you've got fast and slow um, capability there as well, which is good when you want to make fine adjustments. What I'm just going to try here quickly is um, going into stargazing mode, see if I can navigate it to uh, next to the moon, get an initial fix, and then from that point I can then um, slew manually over to the moon. It's a bit tricky to see at the moment exactly where, where it is. I guess we can see where it thinks it's pointing. We can do a slew over to here, hit, hit go to. Clouds are beginning to roll in as well, which is a bit of a pain. It's working a little bit better. Right, so we should be onto the moon now. Had to uh, manually do a bit of plate solving and things, but uh, it's now looking a bit better now. So I've told it to go to the moon, and you can now see it's managed to find the moon okay. Uh, is the moon centered? It's, it's almost centered, it's close enough. Um, Do this to move things around a little bit. It's looking really nice. It's a, there's a little bit of atmospheric wobble there that you can see, but uh, it's a really nice half moon where you can see a lot of shadow and things. So uh, what I'll do first is let's um, just tap that um, target tracking icon there, so it should keep the moon nice and steady in the centre of the frame. Hit auto focus to uh, just run through the automatic focus routine so we can get this as in focus as possible. That's the focusing complete. And now zoom in. Feels like the. So you can change the exposure here on the right hand side. So to hit the plus minus, um, it's on automatic, but we can actually drop it down a bit. So you can see the uh, the changes in the exposure. So that that bit on the edge of the moon where it's obviously it's it's brightest, um, it felt like it was a bit too overexposed. So it's nice to uh, to bring that down a bit more. So what we can do now, right? So what I'm going to do now is uh, take a quick photo of that. So it's just one single image. And now I'm also going to take a a uh, 45 second um, video of this, I'll make sure it's in RAW, 45 second video so that I can actually do um, sort of video stack of, of the moon to try and remove the, the atmospheric wobble but what's really nice whilst we're taking a video of this we can kind of zoom in on the on the iPad itself and it's really quite nice to actually see this. Um, as big as it actually is on the iPad to be able to zoom around and just sort of see see the detail in the moon. 
uh, just so you can see this on the iPad, because it's it's worth seeing what it looks like in terms of um, on what would be a big screen of your own device. Um, so yeah, this now works as a, a native iPad app, which I think is really nice. Um, and you can see the moon quite a nice uh, size there. And then actually, if you want to share this and show the family, show friends and things like that, it's a lot better to see it on this larger device rather than um, rather than the phone. Phone's definitely very convenient, but uh, actually nothing beats um, showing a larger larger view of things. So let's just grab a 45 second raw video of this. Um, and the purpose of that is to remove the atmospheric wobble that if I zoom in you'll be able to see that the uh, the craters and everything sort of are, are rippling. Uh, that's the the air moving above or between uh, between the telescope, all of the Earth's atmosphere um, and then out into space. And so that's that's what is causing that rippling effect. And we can stack all of these uh, frames of the video together to remove that ripple and you'll get a a sharper, more well-defined image. Um, but it's quite nice sort of seeing the the shadows of all of the craters that you get when you uh, have an image of the moon that isn't a complete full moon. You get a bit more definition and a bit more depth to the image of the moon, so I think that looks quite nice. So we've got uh, over 50 seconds there, so we'll stop there. That should be good. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that gets saved on the device itself and what I need to do to then stack that on the computer itself is uh, use the supplied USB-C cable, uh, connect that into the device, connect it into the laptop, uh, transfer the files across like you would with any kind of um, mobile drive and then once you've done that then you can run it through uh, your favourite stacking software. Um, so that's pretty much the uh, the video of actually taking images of the moon with the uh, Seastar S50. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing uh, how easy it is to set up. Um, I would say how easy it is to actually get to the moon itself, although um, yeah, problems with the trees and uh, a few clouds around my around my way uh, tonight has meant that it didn't go straight to the moon. Whereas um, yeah, in previous occasions it's definitely done that. Um, what we'll do now is um, I'm going to go over to uh, my computer, download the um, the video footage from the C-Star, stack it, and then I'll show you a final uh, stacked image. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you want to see more videos, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video, post a comment, uh, let me know what you think about the image, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, so that's just me with my uh, Christmas jumper. Um, at the end of 2023. So I hope everybody has a good Christmas holiday and uh, a happy new year and I shall see you soon. Clear skies. Mm -hmm.